Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our online session on uh, DLT for All. And thank you for being with us this morning. Today with me, I have uh, Dr. Elias Yosif and uh, Dr. Klitos uh, Christodoulou, faculty members of our blockchain program and uh, research, research managers at the Institute for the Future at the University of Nicosia. DLT for All is a program funded by Erasmus, the, uh, the program of the European uh, Commission. And the aim of this workshop is actually to discuss the methodology that we are using for DLT for All, including one of the modules that we're preparing on decentralized applications. Please share my screen so that we can say a few words on uh, DLT for All. Okay. In uh, DLT for All, we are looking into implementing a solution in which uh, we are exploring further into various uh, modules. The aim of it is actually to oh, go into the benefits uh, of blockchain technologies when we are actually adopting them in terms of both growth and innovation. Its objectives is uh, to address the lack of uh, European entrepreneurs, students, uh, angel investors, and uh, incubator managers in understanding and uh, exploding blockchain and distributed technologies. And our aim is actually to co-create with partners uh, an innovative curriculum that will cover the needs of the above uh, target groups. Partners in the project is the University of Nicosia, in which we are coordinators, Gnomon Informatics in Greece, IBAN in Belgium, the Southeast European Research Center in Greece again, the University of San Diego de Compostela, University of Torino, Insomnia Consulting, and Gomonex uh, in Italy. The current practice when it comes to content in relation to blockchain technologies is a lot of material scattered and fragmented all over the place. So our challenge is to look into this highly fragmented material content that exists and look into the important aspects of the technology while integrating it from different uh, perspectives. There are a lot of institutions that still do not have adequate material to teach their students. So we decided to look into some of the main uh, thematic priorities when it comes to blockchain technologies. The first one that we're looking at is peer-to-peer -peer database design, encryption techniques, consensus mechanisms, digital, uh, digital signatures, property rights, and modular smart contracts, the distributed, the distributed autonomous organizations, and the blockchain-based decentralized applications that our university, our team here at IFF is responsible for preparing. Plus, we decided with the partners to introduce an additional, an additional introductory module in which we are not going to have um, so that we don't have overlaps between the various modules in covering same material basics on blockchain technologies. We're looking at implementing a solution in which we're exploring further the above uh, eight modules and uh, also covering various use cases as practical examples ranging from uh, fintech to healthcare. The content uh, of each uh, course is initially designed and discussed, was initially designed and discussed with the various target groups in the five countries uh, that participate in the project. The curriculum was developed, which you can download it from our uh, website on DLT for All. Then we further discussed at the workshop with experts the online and offline methodology that uh, we are going to be using as well, uh, and then the content is uh, currently actually being developed by our partners and ourselves. A series of workshops in which this one is also within the framework of that series, 
uh, has started uh, last month, in which the, uh, all the participating all the participating countries are uh, using it are using them to obtain feedback from the various stakeholders, so that we are able to co-design the material and the content that is related to the needs and requirements of all of uh, all of you that are online with us and the target groups. Actually, we're aiming to uh, prepare content that will be easy enough, but still at the same time, uh, going into enough depth for everybody to understand blockchain technologies. Offline and online now pilot tests for the content are scheduled uh, in the fall. So we invite uh, all of you, including students, researchers, and other individuals from various soccer organizations to download the curriculum that we have on the website uh, shown and provide us with your uh, feedback. Thank you all for uh, being here with us at this session. And um, we'll kindly request at the end of the session also to share uh, your comments with us including the questionnaire that uh, we will be sharing with you soon. It's my pleasure to introduce to you next to Dr. Elias Yosif, who will discuss further the methodology that we are using in DLTA for all with us. Elias? Elias, unfortunately, we cannot hear you. Elias, we cannot hear you. Now? Yep. Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen also? Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, uh, once again, uh, let me welcome you uh, to this uh, online event. Thank you, Sula, for the introduction. So, uh, I think it's time to see the how the DLT for all vision uh, is uh, will be implemented. Okay, in terms of an educational uh, methodology, uh, we have two basic types of uh, methodologies. Um, the first is uh, the online, and the second is the uh, offline. Due to the uh, recent uh, situation of uh, COVID-19, the online methodology uh, has a very special character. I, I suspect that we are facing some technical problems. You cannot see my screen. No. Elias, if you don't mind, I can share mine and... Uh, yes. yes but, the slides. Uh, I don't know if the control, of, if the central control of the. Oh, go from the beginning. So, okay. Yeah. Do. We can see it now. Ilia screen or. Um. Yeah, this is my screen. Uh, if you are facing difficulties, I can keep sharing mine, changing okay. the slides accordingly. Okay. So that okay. we let's do that. Um, so um, let me stop sharing because the StreamYard. Okay. 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 Uh, I was saying that uh, we have two basic types uh, now viewing uh, click the screen. 
So, Clito, I will uh, let you know when it's time to change slide. So, I was saying that we have two basic types of methodologies for uh, delivering the DLT for all uh, material. The first one is the online format, and the second one is the, is the let's say, traditional uh, offline format. And I was saying that uh, given the recent uh, COVID-19 situation, the online format is of a special, let's say, mission because no one knows uh, for sure how this situation will evolve. But yes, let's see, as uh, Sula mentioned, the whole vision of DLT for all is structured around eight modules. So um, those modules start from, uh, let's say, uh, core fundamental material and uh, progressively converge into uh, the, the vision where uh, DAOs and uh, systems that integrate uh, basic emerging technologies are put into uh, realistic applications. And, and the quick comment about the core modules, uh, we strongly believe that, uh, you know, the scientific, the uh, research uh, excellence is strongly based on the foundations of the past. So uh, in the introductory uh, courses, uh, we will provide to the learner the foundations coming from uh, disciplines like computer science, uh, mathematics, etc., uh, in order to know how those technologies uh, were adopted uh, and made the blockchain realization uh, true, and progressively we will discuss the recent advances. And this is uh, the estimated duration for this is about um, 40 hours, and we do not uh, count the absolutely introductory module and code it as module number zero. Uh, this is an introductory module meant for. Uh, the audience who have zero to uh, close to zero knowledge about uh, blockchains. Um, the duration of each uh, module uh, would be between five to seven uh, hours. That is uh, on average six uh, hours with a devia one hour deviation. This is quite natural because, you know, uh, it depends on, on the nature of the of the course. If uh, a course is, uh, let's say, a bit more technical, then more time probably is going to be required for uh, unfolding uh, those uh, technical mechanisms. It depends. Also, it depends on the designer of the course, but it is quite natural to have uh, a very reasonable deviation, which is estimated to be close to an hour. Based on our um, extensive uh, educational experience, uh, the past uh, suggests that we can deliver between 35 to 40 slides uh, per hour. And this, is, uh, and this uh, happens if we have a, a very, very mild interruptions, which is not for, for, for some parts of the course is desirable. For example, when I'm trying to introduce to the, uh, to the uh, learners some basic definitions that we need first to make those definitions clear and then starting the discussion. Obviously, uh, uh, an optimized course needs to have a combination a well-balanced combination of two basic things. Uh, good, excellent material, which is presented by the instructor in combination with engaging discussion with the students. The 35 to 40 slides uh, per hour refers to the first part of this two-factor equation. If of course, uh, we're discussing uh, with students, then less than 35 uh, slides will be presented. But in any case, those figures 
uh, are some averages. Um, a type of sales assessment is, of course, planned to take place at the end of, this, uh, of each uh, session. And uh, we plan to have uh, one to two live sessions for each module where we can uh, try to uh, have uh, a basic Q&A, then discuss uh, more open uh, things. And just to give you an example, uh, quite popular uh, discussion is whether a particular system is uh, truly uh, centralized or not, in which cases we need to have public or private blockchains or something in between. I mean, the, uh, the topic itself is, uh, raises many, many interesting uh, questions for open discussion. Uh, in the same context, uh, we plan to uh, launch uh, a forum where the students, uh, as well as the instructors, uh, can uh, interchange uh, ideas asynchronously, including email communication. And the form of final exam is intended for at the end of the training. And uh, as I was saying, given the COVID-19 situation, we are going to utilize uh, the excellent uh, uh, properties that video recordings uh, brings uh, bring to us. So many of those events uh, will be recorded and made available. So, Clitos, I think uh, we can proceed to the next one. This is uh, where the basic logistics about the, the online methodology. So, and uh, another interesting, uh, I would say, basic consideration. Uh, so far, we have uh, presented the content of the material itself. The other basic dimension is uh, the audience. Uh, of course, we expect uh, a mixture of uh, different backgrounds being presented in the audience. However, the two basic uh, groups which uh, can determine the style of the content are the one presented. So uh, we are going to have uh, appropriately formatted material for business-oriented uh, groups as well as for uh, technical oriented uh, groups. Just to give you a very quick um, brief example of how things can work. For example, uh, regarding the business oriented group, we can focus on uh, use cases. Uh, for the same content regarding the technical oriented uh, part of the course, we may go into technical details about how those cases uh, were uh, implemented. Uh, for the technical group, we may focus on rice, writing some basic, let's say, source code, while the uh, business-oriented group may uh, do um, code inspection only. So uh, the idea is to try to uh, adaptively put the content uh, into the derived uh, context as this context is determined by the, the, the background of the audience. Mm -hmm. Trying to see um, uh, pause to see if we have any any questions so far. Any questions? Um, okay. Um, regarding the offline methodology, we plan to have. Um, uh, actually, uh, the, the, these are uh, are the plans. Uh, that uh, I would say they are agnostic to the COVID situation since we have the great ability uh, to 
organize them uh, according to the uh, to the current uh, situation. So these uh, are the plans for the offline methodology. If things I'm referring to COVID-19, uh, uh, hopefully will uh, proceed well. Uh, we have plans for four test uh, rollouts, to, uh, which are planned to be organized in uh, Italy, Cyprus, uh, Greece, uh, Spain. Uh, the duration would be from 16 to 24 hours, having approximately uh, 20 participants. And uh, during the, this uh, part of the methodology rollout, we are going to test uh, only uh, two, either some between two and four uh, modules. Uh, and this will be delivered by local trainers, mainly local trainers. trainers. Uh, we, we plan to have a sales assessment and a live online uh, session. Uh, after the first uh, rollouts, all of the online material will be made available, freely available. And uh, we are going to plan the four full uh, academy uh, rollouts. Again, organized in uh, Italy, Cyprus, Greece, uh, and uh, Spain. Uh, so we have some uh, more information, uh, which actually it's uh, according to the initial plan to uh, totally devote 40 uh, hours, having some trainers uh, traveling, as I was saying, if things hopefully uh, proceed well uh, across uh, the four uh, geographical uh, points where the academies will take place and facilitate the, the process or the overall process. And this is a, a nice design feature because, you know, by experiencing how things uh, uh, are implemented in different places, you have a holistic view of, uh, of the situation. Uh, for each module, uh, we are going to provide a series of uh, cell uh, assessment taking the form of uh, uh, short uh, quizzes or questions. And uh, those we managed to pass uh, at least the 80% of those shorter assignments, uh, we will have uh, access for a final uh, exam. And those short assignments count for the 30% of the final, uh, final grades. Mm -hmm. Yes, Clitos. And uh, regarding the final exam, this is planned to take place uh, approximately one month after the end of the course uh, in order to give us sufficient time uh, to students for preparation. Um, the plans are to also have a face-to-face -face, uh, exams and uh, at the premises of uh, the partners participating in the consortium. Um, after the end of the project, uh, an excellent idea is to investigate uh, partnership with uh, testing centers in order to have this program uh, run, uh, and the final exam part of the program run after the end of the project. This is something we are uh, currently looking into. And uh, as Asula mentioned in the beginning, uh, a number of uh, DLT for all uh, partners are universities. And based on that, we are investigating the possibility to assign uh, five ECTS to uh, the entire DLT for all uh, material. And this decision is, uh, uh, it's going to happen at the individual level. Uh, I mean, each university, uh, university is going to see how this is uh, feasible and how this fits with the respective uh, academic program of, of the university. And uh, the, again, uh, we'll take account uh, the contribution of the final exam uh, setting set at the 70% of the final grades. 
And I think that uh, this concludes, you know, the, the logistics uh, of the program in terms of events and uh, exams. Thanks, Lido. Thank you. Thank you, Dia. Um, again, um, a quick welcome from my side. Uh, thank you all for joining us this morning. Another um, morning working from home, utilizing um, the technology and the capabilities of streaming and doing live videos. Uh, as mentioned by, by Sula and Elias, um, DLT for All, uh, it's an Erasmus funded project which has to do with providing excellence in education in terms of mystical ledger technologies within blockchains. And as mentioned by Sula, this uh, program is divided into delivering um, eight modules. Um, in this particular slide, I will be presenting the details of one of these learning modules, which the University of Nicosia is responsible for designing and delivering. This has to do with uh, blockchain-based decentralized applications. We believe that this is a very important learning module since it needs to have a blend between um, technical um, knowledge and more abstract knowledge, which is delivered not only to technical crowds, uh, but also to non-technical audiences. And therefore, we, we need to find a balance between uh, the delivery of the information and the various you know, details and, uh, that we will be presenting. So in this particular module, uh, we will be um, showing how um, blockchain technology uh, works under the hood, but also providing a couple of illustrations and showing at the abstract level how everything uh, comes into place what are the components that are comprising this technology. And of course, um, showing examples, of snippets, uh, but also um, teaching people how, how, how they can use the various tools. Uh, this is more specific to the technical audiences, but it will be showing how uh, people can use the various tools, the various uh, layers uh, of the technologies, of the blockchain technology stack to build uh, their own uh, decentralized applications. And we've seen that these decentralized applications are currently disrupting many industries and they are considered um, disruptive uh, for, you know, also for the uh, technology that comprising the, the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, so this, this is like a brief overview of the course. Um, since uh, this course will be um, technical, uh, it will also have a technical dimension as well as a more abstract dimension. It will, con it will consider the third one is with one of the first, the very first modules uh, delivered by the IT for all, which is the introduction to the decentralized ledger technology as well. This is the learning module zero, as we call it in our curriculum. And then uh, it will also it will also have links with the learning module uh, five, which has to do with the uh, implementation of smart contracts and showing uh, mostly how developers can uh, use uh, either the, the Solidity language, which is becoming the de facto standard for implementing smart contracts, but also um, other languages that could be used for um, implementing um, smart contracts on distributed technologies. So these are the prerequisites for uh, the learning module seven. Um, our objectives is to, as I've said previously, uh, to bridge the gap, uh, the knowledge gap uh, that exists between understanding the technology and using the technology, but also providing the necessary uh, key details and characteristics for developing decentralized applications, as well as discussing the fundamental properties of blockchains, um, pro the properties, but also the challenges that are currently, the communities are currently faced. And these challenges are mostly um, inherited uh, by what we are referring to as the blockchain trilemma, 
the security and centralization and scalability aspects of uh, these cryptographic technologies. And uh, towards the end of this module, we, are, um, we will be presenting the technological stacks for building decentralized applications, the life cycle of building such uh, uh, decentralized applications with you know, the appropriate user interfaces and also the backend, uh, which is supported by a set of smart contracts. And we will be uh, explaining the various synergies between um, the uh, smart contracts and decentralized applications and other emerging technologies and discussing uh, towards the end of this module uh, the legal implications of decentralized applications and you know ethical considerations etc so these are mostly the an outline of the learning outcomes um, which is as I mentioned to um, access uh, the um, uh, to actually uh, compare the uh, decentralized way of developing applications with the traditional centralized mo model uh, to analyze the various characteristics and properties of blockchains and ways to optimize them um, to assess the uh, with the use of various use cases how suitable blockchains are in developing uh, decentralized applications um, and examine how uh, in essence examining how uh, useful are decentralized applications and in various scenarios so uh, getting to the various details, um, one of the main sections of uh, this learning module is um, to dive into the main components that comprise in the centralized application. These are mainly um, the front end, uh, which is developed with the use of various technologies such as JavaScript and uh, backend uh, development which comprises with a set of uh, smart contracts that run on some blockchain protocol which provides the fundamental infrastructure for supporting the execution of smart contracts but also a middle layer which uh, acts as the interface um, between the front end the user interface and, and the back end so in this particular section We'll, we will begin our journey into diving into the, um, uh, you know, uh, various layers that comprise the technology with these key aspects, and then uh, discuss the um, various uh, technological, if you like, layers, uh, the various, um, what we are referring as the technological stack uh, that com compose blockchains, and this um uh, layers support various properties uh, including privacy scalability interoperability also the incentivization mechanisms that are built into such protocols but also governance and energy efficiency and if we go back in you know considering the evolution of blockchains from version 1.0 to uh, what uh, and how how the technology has evolved to 3.0, which is the current, if you like, evolution cycle. Uh, we uh, can say that we we have experienced um, how the various properties uh, were optimized in the various layers, um, and these layers um, are consisting of, you know, the hardware or if you like, the hosting layer, which is the actual. In hardware infrastructure, referring to the devices that are sustaining blockchain networks, moving up to the network layer, which is how the messages are treated between and delivered between the nodes. Uh, the, of course, the uh, most important component, which is the consensus protocol, um, how uh, the network reaches into agreement which is what we are referring as the layer of finalization um, how the network itself provides a degree of security with you know civil control mechanism and which is the layer of you know uh, preventing uh, fake identities etc and preventing attacks to the networks and of course
was at the top of, of this technology. And the game layer, which is actual layer that has been used by the by the actual user. Uh, this is mostly um, the you know the technology stuff, uh, technology stuff that we will be delivering, but also uh, showing and illustrating this with with various examples uh, on uh, on the front end, uh, but also on the back end. Uh, so um, we have a couple of questions as I can see from the chat. Um, with regards to documentation, uh, what do you mean exactly? Um, okay. Um, yes, we will be delivering various examples uh, in terms of how to build decentralized applications, mostly using um, blockchain networks that use the Ethereum virtual machine. We will, we will be explaining the technical details, but also how the various uh, networks are incentivizing participation. Um, I guess that's all from my side, Elias. Um, I will be switching to the next slide. Um, Thank you, Kledos. So, design patterns for decentralized application. Let me uh, introduce this uh, topic, oh, this module, by asking a question. Do you believe that, do you know, to put it correctly, uh, are you aware of any system, complex software system, that is close to 100% uh, decentralized? referring to software systems. I would like to see uh, your view. Any ideas? Uh, a variant of this question is uh, if you are, are aware of uh, any complex software system that utilizes as a component, as a computational component, uh, a blockchain-based uh, system. And this is uh, closely related with uh, what Clitos just uh, mentioned about the end-to-end -end, uh, spectrum of the application design. So it's up to you, uh, Marcel, the definition of uh, decentralization. Decentralized mean, uh, let's go by the traditional uh, definition, owned by the community, uh, no uh, central control, uh, full availability. I mean, uh, the redundancy of uh, Bitcoin blockchain uh, gives uh, full availability on this serverless, let's say, uh, system. Yes, it's for free, for sure, the World Wide Web is not uh, an example. Mm -hmm. Also, the governance is determined by the community. Yes, but regardless of the definition, let's see uh, the focus here is if uh, as, as end users, we are using uh, systems that uh, are based on blockchains, at least uh, partially. Any ideas about those systems? Uh, for example, um, not. Uh, let's start from. Uh, I see, Marcel. What do you mean? Let's start from very, very simple um, uh, examples. Uh, as you probably know, uh, the University of uh, Nicosia is offering. Uh, for free, an introductory course uh, uh, to digital currency and blockchains following a MOOC uh, format. And at the same time, this uh, the, uh, this course is considered in the, as the first course to the respective MSc program. Uh, 
every uh, successful uh, attendee receives uh, a certificate that is uh, published on the blockchain. So if we have uh, developed uh, a system that uh, verifies this, uh, this certificate. From a system perspective, this system uses the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, a typical blockchain explorer, uh, which is made available to the user uh, through a front end, is a system. Uh, thanks, Kadi. It's a system that relies on the back end or on one or more uh, blockchains. For example, many, uh, the majority of explorers uh, retrieve inf information and analyze this information from multiple blockchains. Uh, so, the, the situation is that every complex information system has a varying degree of blockchain utilization as well associated with a varying de degree of decentralization. Uh, the norm is that uh, those systems are not purely decentralized. This is the norm. The exception, uh, the statistical exception, the statistical minority, if you like, uh, can be counted uh, in single-digit uh, statistics. Uh, why I'm saying uh, uh, this? Because uh, the decentralized design uh, patterns meant to provide some design principles for software architects as well as uh, analysts. In any case, this, this part of the course targets both the business group as well as the technical uh, group. So, in this context, we are examining blockchains as computational elements, as storage, if you like, elements, as uh, security elements, in other words, as uh, digital components of a larger system uh, that conduct a series of uh, operations and blockchain happens to be uh, a part of this larger system. To put it differently, blockchain is excellent for certain things, but at the same time cannot solve, cannot solve any computational problem. So this part uh, considers uh, blockchain as an excellent tool included in our uh, toolbox. That includes other things uh, such as uh, uh, fancy GUIs, uh, probably databases, distributed databases, probably some uh, intelligent uh, intelligent algorithm, etc., etc. And uh, we are trying to identify, we have identified uh, four families of such patterns which can act as, tem as templates, that is generic guidelines during the design as well the analysis of such uh, systems. And uh, we consider this type of information of critical importance because we are trying to put, I need to give the, the, the overall picture. Blockchain usually is used in combination with other technologies, both emerging as well as uh, traditional uh, technologies. And we have uh, patterns for interacting with the external world. Uh, here we are going to discuss about uh, oracles if you are familiar with the term. And just to, just to give you the, the, the brief idea, blockchain can be approached by the closed world uh, hypothesis. That is everything that happens uh, within blockchain stays within blockchain. The interaction with the external world, for example, uh, by retrieving data from a database uh, located in a traditional server uh, is not possible 
unless special uh, mechanisms are put in place. Data management has to do with how we handle data in the context of blockchain, for sure. And uh, first of all, we need uh, we need to uh, demystify the relation between blockchains and data. Uh, blockchains, they are not designed for storing and managing a uh, large amount of data. The way to do this is to have uh, a short, in terms of bytes, uh, summary of uh, the data that uniquely characterizes the data of interest stored in the blockchain and then having the actual data in a different uh, system relying uh, on uh, things like uh, IPFS. And this is how this relates with uh, the communication with the external world. And then we are uh, focusing on uh, things having to do uh, with the smart contracts, discussing security and some uh, templates about the development of smart uh, contracts. Um, I think, uh, Clitos, I give the, I, I don't know if there are any questions sure, about thank you, Leah. patterns, tablets, I guess no, okay. Thank you, Leah. Uh, moving from uh, design patterns, uh, as mentioned by Elias, um, the next logical step is the development of the actual decentralized application. And this particular uh, part of the course, we will be presenting and discussing the typical life cycle for creating such um, you know, decentralized applications. Uh, focusing both on the front end, but also on the back end in the development of smart contracts. This typical life cycle consists of um, the development um, uh, phase, which uh, with the use of various um, open source of tools. We will be focusing mostly on Solidity, but we will be also sharing examples and code snippets uh, from you know the use of let's say. Um, chain code or Python that translates to chain code, etc. Uh, in other more private settings, and then uh, we are we're moving from the development phase. Uh, the next phase is the compilation stage, where where the code is, is translated uh, to something that the blockchain ecosystem can understand. Uh, we then uh, pass to the testing phase. And there we uh, we can test our uh, application and, and the smart contracts whether they are behaving according to uh, the implementation and the logic that that is embedded within this uh, within the set of smart contracts. Uh, this again will be illustrated with the use of open source tools. Uh, we will be showing um, uh, how how you can deploy your own private network and then test and deploy your smart contracts uh, with the use of uh, again scripts and automating the procedure there are currently uh, various uh, testing frameworks out there uh, that are open source and we will be uh, touching base on some of these most popular um, uh, frameworks for for testing and, and development these frameworks are actually being used by developers to um, is the process of you know development compilation and testing and once we are happy with our um, decentralized application i mean the smart contracts we can then deploy them on the network and we'll be showing how this um, translates to something that the network understand and we will also be discussing on various patterns um, uh, for uh, up upgrading our existing contracts deploying new versions of these contracts and inheriting some of their functionality and properties. And, uh, you know, our journey will be guided through uh, code snippets, examples and illustrations uh, that will allow people to understand and compare the logic, the implementation logic on building smart contracts on private settings versus the public um, blockchains. Um, again, using various illustrations and use cases uh, in both uh, development environments. 
Great, moving from this uh, to the next slide. Um, yes, thank you, Klitos. Uh, I think that uh, so far, uh, uh, the structure, the plant material creates an excellent background from various perspectives for both basic groups, namely the business-oriented group uh, and the te uh, technology-oriented group, for start discussing uh, use cases. Uh, regardless of the target group, I mean uh, the presentation of real-life use cases uh, is an excellent way to see how, let's use the, the cliche expression, how the theory applies to practice. So, uh, for our course, we plan to start from the traditional, one of the traditional use cases dealing with uh, cryptos. I mean, uh, probably up to date, the most uh, successful blockchain-based application is probably the, the first one uh, made uh, possible uh, by Bitcoin blockchain, which is, uh, you know, uh, making uh, transactions, sending uh, Bitcoins and, uh, and cryptos. Of course, many, many other things uh, have also proposed and implemented by then, but I think this is the, the first one and the most basic. In this context, we are going to present decentralized exchange markets. So the idea is that I have, let's say, X Bitcoins, Y Ethereum, and I would like to uh, spend a part of uh, those funds buying uh, a report, for example. How can I do uh, this without uh, some fees? And if there are fees, uh, what's the percentage of those uh, fees? Uh, is uh, this operation safe? Uh, do I control uh, the details of this operation, etc., etc. And we are going to present th those services are provided by third parties, by third party services. Uh, frequently termed as decentralized exchange markets. And the main message we are trying to convey there by analyzing the, a series of characteristics is that unfortunately, those uh, third party services, okay, they are useful. However, they are in varying degrees centralized. So they are using a decentralized technology for providing a not so decentralized service. And we will analyze why uh, and uh, which are the critical points, uh, which critical points are important for the system analyst as well as for the uh, developer. Imagine a developer that uh, plans to use an API. An API is a way to put it uh, briefly, for different programs to communicate uh, with each other. So uh, we provide some basic information about the nature and the internal uh, mechanism of those markets in order to demystify some things. But the main take home message is that it's twofold. First of all, those markets are centralized, more or less, and there are some key points where uh, we need to uh, be very, very careful. Uh, by extending uh, the first uh, use case, we have decentralized data markets. Uh, right now, we are uh, data producers. I mean, we are producing a multimodal uh, product consisting of uh, speech, uh, video, written content, etc., etc. Uh, those who are going to see the recorded video, they are uh, uh, consumers. Uh, each of us is both a producer as well as consumer of such data. So we will see how blockchains can disrupt uh, at certain degrees 
the traditional model of uh, producing and consuming data? The answer is uh, similar to the previous use case. We cannot have 100% decentralization, but at the critical points of this ecosystem, including data producers, data consumers, some services like indexing, searching, requesting on demand, consuming on demand data, uh, analyzing data for uh, ST, uh, for um, extracting knowledge. Some of those uh, services, yes, they can be done on top of uh, blockchain and this ability uh, brings uh, a significant, lay, let's say, uh, disruption in the traditional data markets. Uh, we had the opportunity before to uh, uh, mention the blockchain uh, verifiable certificates referring to uh, our MOOC, and I saw a comment and uh, Yes, uh, by Cathy, that is recommended. Absolutely agree. Thanks for that. And we will present how uh, we have implemented and how we are using uh, our blockchain verifiable certificates. And the one of the most interesting things is that we are doing this for years. We started from our university, and right now uh, we have some... Uh, excellent use cases uh, and uh, Bloco, uh, a company was created out of this um, effort. But in the same context, we will also present Blogspot, an excellent academic uh, network that uh, adopts a similar philosophy, focuses on the uh, uh, publishing of academic work. We are funding members of uh, the Blocksberg uh, network, uh, specifically Professor uh, Sula Luka uh, is among the uh, funding members uh, representing our university. And extending this uh, use case, uh, we are going, uh, we are pro uh, progressing from the certificates to the broader uh, topic of uh, identities and we will see how uh, we can utilize uh, blockchains for uh, towards uh, having the absolute if possible and the answer is unfortunately not yet but how we can gain more control regarding our uh, identity uh, let me give you an example uh, the the current situation is that uh, giant companies uh, that provide to you email or social media companies, uh, they are controlling your credentials. You can use those credentials in order to uh, gain access uh, to other services by saying uh, things uh, uh, by, by those, uh, those services frequently prompt you to please use your ex email account in order to log in or use your blah 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 account in order in order to enter this way we have uh, silos of ids we have uh, some giants that control your id at least as far as those uh, web services are concerned so the idea is to reverse this situation and put the user at the center of the id this is uh, the overall uh, scheme, and we, we are going to present how and which uh, blockchain components can be utilized for that. And we are going to uh, conclude uh, this uh, topic by referring to uh, some uh, emerging uh, use cases dealing with um, the utilize integration of machine learning, AI, uh, let's say, and the uh, blockchain, as well as uh, data acquired from uh, devices equipped with sensors, which is the case of IoT, Internet of Things. And I think uh, this, yes, this relates to, uh, to the next slide. Thanks, Klitos. The integration. <clears throat> 
of uh, all those emerging technologies, uh, I think creates the path towards more complex uh, decentralized applications that give the first signs regarding the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, fourth industrial revolution is a quite uh, broad, quite generic term. Uh, it refers, uh, among other things, to the singularity point uh, where this is an imaginary scenario. I don't know uh, the probability according to which uh, this is going to happen. But the uh, singularity point refers to the point in time where the intelligence of a machine uh, competes uh, the intelligence of uh, human beings. But till this point, we have a lot of steps uh, in order to reach this convergence point. So the idea here is to explain First of all, why Internet of Things, AI, including machine learning and blockchain technologies, can work together. Based on this explanation, we, uh, we are going to present a series of, uh, of examples. Let me give you uh, <clears throat> a summary of the why part. IoT refers to interconnected uh, devices, which of course, produce and share data. The availability, those data uh, is uh, what machine learning needs. The majority of machine, uh, of AI alg algorithms, uh, the machine learning based algorithms are data hungry. They need data in order to operate. Uh, having intelligent uh, services that re re rely on AI algorithms, then uh, we have the business opportunity of deploying them on serverless environments, on blockchain-based environments, which are also equipped with native uh, currencies like uh, Ethereum. So under uh, these conditions, uh, we see a natural, but okay, challenging fit between those three broad technologies, which is, as I said, a step, probably a small step, but a step towards the vision uh, of uh, the fourth industrial revolution. And in this context, we are going to discuss both uh, the capabilities, but as well as the limitations of those technologies, because it is important to know that what is not possible, at least for now. So knowing both the capabilities and the limitation, limitation is very, very important. And uh, I think that uh, we have uh, presented a wide spectrum of topics and technologies. I uh, hope that uh, we have triggered your uh, interest. Uh, and let's, uh, let's start uh, by discussing uh, any related uh, thoughts, questions? I think that I saw uh, a number of them in the chat. So, Clitos, so from our, my side, uh, this was the last slide. Thank you once again. And uh, let's take. Thank you, Lias. Uh, I, can, I can summarize some of So, I guess that we are open. Can you yeah. hear me? Yep. Okay, thank you, Ibra yes, and uh, Glido, for uh, the presentation. Just to summarize, uh, I would like to say a few more words on DLT for all, uh, based also on the questions that I see uh, here. The, the eight modules uh, make up actually 40 hours of, uh, about 40 hours of teaching uh, approximately. The module that uh, Elias and Glido uh, just uh, presented is uh, will be on average the content five to seven hours this is how much we uh, expected that uh, it's going uh, to be whoever finishes all the 40 hours uh, and of course successfully completes all the different uh, assessments that uh, we have will receive a certificate that will be issued on the blockchain uh, as Elias has already mentioned, uh, the academic uh, partners, the universities, they are looking also into uh, 
the within their departments for assigning about five ECTS uh, credits for those who successfully finish uh, the course. The modules will run on uh, our uh, on the University of Nicosia platform, and they will be free for uh, everybody. It's as I said, this is not related to the MSc. It's just a 40-hour course that gives you an overview of the blockchain technologies, and it applies to everybody, whoever is interested in learning more about these um, technologies and how they, we can integrate them with um, the other um, emerging ones that we have, like AI and uh, cloud uh, and IoT. Um, so, before I pass the floor to Elias and Glidos, if they have anything uh, more to say, uh, just a request, please fill out the survey that is already posted on the, uh, on the channel. We will be sending it also to you via email. Feel free to contact us for further uh, questions, feedback. We would appreciate very much your feedback on how we actually structure uh, the whole, uh, all of these uh, different modules. And uh, the other thing that uh, I would like to mention is, well, it's actually to thank you all for being here with us. And uh, we will keep you updated on the, um, up, on the upcoming uh, pilots that will start uh, in all the countries in the uh, in the participating um, uh, countries in uh, September October. So thank you all. Ilya Glido has the floor to you. If you have yes. uh, anything to say, thank you, Sulamu. Um, I just want to get um, uh, the opinion from the crowd uh, for the following. You know, uh, for you know, uh, blockchain technology is it's a very complex system by itself, and sometimes um, technical people uh, for technical people is challenging to describe um, in abstract terms um, the you know all the technicalities that um, if you like power the blockchain system, and I would like to um, uh, to ask the crowd. On, on their expectations, because you know, people, even non-technical people, they would like to understand at least uh, with illustrations or at the abstract level, how everything works, you know? And the question is, in your opinion, what's your the best way of what you would like to see from, from a, a, a course that also dives into the technical details? Uh, again, on blockchains, the stipulated letters. So that, that's my my personal question that I would like to use the wisdom from wisdom of the crowd to to infer this knowledge. Thank you, Clito. This is a very important question, uh, actually. Um, so either just write on the chat or uh, email us on uh, that. Well. If there are no more uh, questions and comments, I would like uh, to thank uh, all of you, as I said, for being here with us. And also special thanks to my team, great guys, you're all great. Ilya, Glidon, uh, Valentino, and Mustafa at the background for technical support. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Sula. And uh, I mean, for people that they would like to stay engaged, stay tuned. Uh, please uh, drop us an email, and we will we will get back to you with more details. Uh, however, it, for people that they miss this live session, if you if you see this uh, in an asynchronous mode, please do send your questions. We will be more than happy to support and and get back to you. Thank you, all guys. Thank you. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye, bye.